Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna take a look at this Artistro 48 set of watercolor paints. This is what I would consider uh, a budget paint set. Now I have seen this fluctuate in price. Currently it is uh, just under $28 on Amazon with a 10% off coupon, but the price can fluctuate up and down. We have seen a lot of that on Amazon lately. So it, we've got this outer box and uh, the company did reach out to me and ask if I wanted to review this. And I said yes, because I'd had a couple viewers ask me about this set independently before they reached out to me. So um, that's generally how I decide whether I'll review a product if a company reaches out. If I've heard chatter from you guys that you wanna see this product reviewed independently, and it just so happens that the company reaches out to me, then I do say, then I do say yes. Um, otherwise, I often just purchase stuff to review on my own. So this comes with 10 sheets of super heavy weight, 140 pounds, which is actually standard watercolor weight, paper. And it is seven inches by three inches. That's kind of a fun size. And we've also got this pretty tin, which I think is what piqued the curiosity of some of my viewers because it is cute. It's mint green, very trendy color. It's got some pretty um, embossed gold filigree on the side and um, a little latch. Let's take a look here and see what's inside. So inside we have a color chart on watercolor paper, which is nice because that's going to save me some time to do my swatches. We have um, an overlay, kind of like the Sennelier paints and the, um, the Aquafine paints have these overlays, which is kind of nice because um, if you forget what a color is and you want to look at it and then you can always cross reference on your chart. The only thing that um, I'm noticing about this chart is that it's not going to line up with the pan. So that might be a bit confusing, but it will get the job done as far as being able to swatch these out and see what we want to see. Um, this is nice and thick. It's thicker than the Sennelier overlay charts, which is good. And it looks like there's a coating. It looks like the printing is actually um, on the top or maybe even sandwiched in between a couple sheets of plastic. So if your paint's a little wet and it gets on there, it shouldn't be a problem, which is something I'd had happen with my, um, with my Aquafine paints. Cause I teach with the Aquafine set of 24 and the little, um, if I put the little plastic inserts back in, they get stuck. And I've had some of the paint actually come off the pl plastic inserts on those, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because the printing is not on the back side, which is nice. Um, these look to be extruded pans. I don't like probably extruded pans are glued down. Let me see if I can get this out and we can take a look at the, um, let me take a look at the carrier of our pans. Oh, it's a nice, it's a nice tin actually. So when you use up your paint, you have that, that you could probably use that as a pencil box. Um, I'm going to just gently, okay. They're all glued in. I can see glue spots on the back. They appear to be about a half pan each. Um, I'm going to try to pry one of these out. I'll try to pry out the white. Uh, there we go. It looks like it's got a glue dot on the bottom. As you can see, it is an extruded half pan of paint. Um, this insert here is a little bit, um, it's a little thin. I think it's going to be fine for this, but just kind of keep in mind, it is a little bit thin. I wouldn't go ripping these out willy nilly. I just wanted to show you guys just to show you it's not a thin bit of plastic uh, or thin bit of paint because you never know sometimes pans can be deceiving in their um in their tins i like that this comes out because that's actually a really cute tin i would see myself repurposing that as a pencil box or something um, i'm a sucker for cute packaging so <laughs> yeah <laughs> the want monster likes the cute packaging cute tins i have so many tin i say i have a big box it's like a one of those big plastic totes just full of tins that I saved <laughs> after I like used up the colored pencils or put them in something else. Uh, we've got a sponge for wiping off your brush. This can be rinsed out in the sink and wrung out and put back, which I like, it's not glued down. Uh, we have a plastic eraser, which is my favorite for watercolor painting because it doesn't damage the paper. We've got a very fine brush. It looks like it's about a number three. Um, it doesn't say, I'd say it's probably about number three. There are a couple of hairs that are bent over, but I think this, the collar wasn't put on properly. So I'm not going to put the collar back on. Don't try to get these back on your brushes, by the way, when you get a new brush, because that's just going to ruin them. We have got a triangular pencil. So we'll have to sharpen that up. It's a 2B, so it's a little bit on the soft side. So we'll make some dark lines and we have a water brush and the water brush looks similar to the Karen Dosh style water brush. Here we go. It, well, no, it's actually, no, it's not. It's more like the Arteza water brushes. Um, I was thinking it was like the Caran d'Ache has like the plunger. It's got a push area, but it's also got a plunger. 
So yeah, we'll fill that up and uh, let's take a quick look at our paper. Uh, what do you think of this unboxing? You can let me know in the comments below. It's weird. I think it's weird, but uh, but people like I don't know. I guess it is kind of fun to watch an unbo unboxing because then you get to see. Oh, is it a pad? No, it's not a pad. It's a, like a booklet, a booklet of watercolor papers. Huh. This paper looks like the. Um, it reminds me of the old, the first Arteza watercolor paper that came out because it it's it's textured on one side and it's smooth on the other. And with the old Arteza paper, I would use the back side for my water-based markers. I didn't really like the front side, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. I do like painting on unusual sizes, so that might be kind of fun. So what I'm going to do is I am going to fill this water brush up. I'm going to sharpen the pencil, and I'm going to swatch out the colors. I am going to take a pen, though, a waterproof pen. Let's get a micron, a nice uh, a thick micron here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and make lines on each of these so that when I swatch them, I can see how transparent or uh, opaque they are. So uh, we'll see you back in a minute. Okay, future Lindsay here. I have spent a few days swatching and playing with these paints. Um, so you just saw the unboxing and I thought I was going to do it live, but, um, but I couldn't, I just couldn't uh, trust my first impressions on these. So I ended up doing a bunch of different samples and, um, and then, and now you're going to hear my thoughts, I guess. Is that, that, I don't know. You can let me know if you prefer this type of video or the type where I just kind of come in after I've done all the tests and just bam, right, right off the bat. So I swatched out the colors from the kit here, which I don't know if I showed you that on, um, on film or not. I have to go back and look at the footage. Um, and I was pretty impressed actually when I was swatching it out on this paper. I'm like, the colors seem to have a pretty texture. They are a little bit chalky in some colors, which, you know, I'd expect that on the, um, the more opaque colors. Uh, and the, the metallics did seem to be nice and punchy, which is, which is nice. Um, and I thought the colors looked really rich on this paper, especially like the ultramarine. I just thought it was just a nice, um, a nice overall set of colors, but I didn't like how the swatch was set up. It wasn't in the order of the paints and it didn't correspond with the layout of the palette. So I used some of their paper and I made my own swatch here. The colors did not look as pretty on this paper as it did on the swatch that they had printed, but um, but I figured that's fine. I just need this for a color reference anyway. I was able to do my opacity test over here and I could see that they, you know, they were kind of, um, kind of sedimentary. One thing I noticed about this paint was that it's very thirsty, meaning if I like went in with a wet brush, it like absorbed the water so quickly. Uh, I pre ended up pre-spraying just to kind of give it a head start because I mean, it does just kind of like suck the water right in. Um, the, the, uh, the pans themselves just kind of have a matte finish to them. Um, they don't seem to have any problem reactivating, but they are definitely kind of a thirsty paint. I think there might be a little bit more of a chalky filler in them than other brands. Usually like if I see a paint that's got a little bit of a gloss to them, um, then it will, uh, it will be more transparent when I paint it. It's like it's got a little bit more binder in the, in the ratio, which makes it a little more transparent, which can make it too hard to rewet. But, um, you know, so it's a balance that they have to strike. This one definitely, uh, has, I feel like a little bit more chalky filler. Um, at first I thought these, these kind of reminded me when I was first swatching them of the Koi pocket box, but after using them on over a few pieces, they are not as pigmented as the Koi box and they're less transparent than the Koi pocket box. So, um, I always try to find something that I feel like it's the most similar to, uh, that's what I thought it was the most similar to, but, um, but now I'm feeling that it's more similar to the, um, oh, like the, uh, the Phoenix slash Arteza round cakes of watercolors, but I still think those are a little bit more transparent and more punchy, but that's, that's probably what I would put them at the most similar to. However, these are quite a bit more expensive. Um, so let's look at the color mixes here. So I did a, a warm color mix and a cool color mix just to see what sort of range I could get from my most primary warm color. So I have like an ultramarine, a cad red hue, and a, probably a cad yellow or a gamboge and um, mix those. So I got a nice vibrant orange. It's hard to, it was hard to get like a very subtle, I think it's because they're not very transparent. You can see how it's kind of occluded the, uh, the letters on there. I found it hard to get like kind of more subtle gradients between the two colors. Um, 
but you know I was able to mix those those primaries out and then I mixed the cool primaries which I was really kind of disappointed with how dull the mixes from the cool primaries were because generally your cooler colors give you a better um, a more truer transparent mix but these these even being the brightest colors in the in the mix so I for the cool I used that um, that and uh, that it still didn't give me that really bright punchy mix that I wanted so um, so I, you know I mean I, I mix a lot of my colors even though there's plenty of colors you don't need to mix it's still nice to be able to mix now speaking of the color selection though one thing that really was uh, was too bad is that there's no yellow ochre I would have traded all the neons all the metallics all the grays for one yellow ochre yellow ochre is such a vital color there's also no real strong cool blue there is a Prussian blue here but um, it is it's not great for mixing a phthalo blue would have been better for mixing all of the other strong blues are very purple leaning and uh, the cooling blues are all kind of muted with extra white which all these paints I feel like have some white in them that that just kind of uh, it kind of degrades your ability to mix with them which is really too bad uh, so let's look at some of the the paintings that I did um, I started to film this one I was going to film this and kind of show that it's part of the tutorial but I struggled so much I was very frustrated with the lack of flow of the paint and um, the lack of transparency. I mean, I think it's kind of cute, you know, it'd be cute to hang up during a birthday party or something or make a, like a gigantic greeting card, birthday card for somebody. That would be kind of fun, like just paste this on a piece of poster board, like fold it in half, make like just a giant birthday card. That would be so fun. Um, but as far as painting, I was not pleased with how it went and I really didn't enjoy painting with them. But then I'm like, well, maybe I was just in a funk. So I did a few more paintings because I was kind of like, uh, frustrated when I was working with these so I'm like I don't want to let that cloud my judgment that was another reason I couldn't do the review all in one go because I was feeling a little frustrated I was very um, heartened by seeing how the color swatched out on this paper that they printed the swatch on which to me looks like the original like 90 pound B watercolor paper I'm not sure but that's how it looked I did use some cotton watercolor paper on one of my examples and I did not get that kind of flow and that uh, that look on on the, the papers that I tried uh, so these are these first three are on the paper that they provide so I did just a little kind of like loose watercolor rows just to see if I could thin them out if they would flow really didn't get a lot of flow um, even when I thinned it out I tried putting more strong pigment into wet areas I didn't get much bleed out and flow so that was frustrating to me because I do I mean I'm not that particular about needing a lot of flow in my paints but I do like to be able to get it when I want it um, this on this example where I was using a little more control it worked much better um, I found that if you do want you want to paint that stays put this is a pretty good option and if you like those softer more muted colors like pastel colors because they're cause, because of the fillers in there that's how the budget paints a lot of times um, bring the price down is by putting fillers now this is kind of um, hot expensive on the budget end this is 48 colors for I think it was like around 28 while I'm recording this I think that's kind of expensive for this particular quality of paint personally. Um, this one I used the back side, the smooth side of the paper that they um, that they included and I like the smooth side better so that's one thing I would recommend if you do have this set try the smoother side if you're not happy with the textured side. This reminds me of the original Arteza papers that they came out with originally. Since then they have created better papers that I enjoy. I enjoy their sketchbooks and I enjoy their um, their cotton watercolor papers as well as their premium cellulose papers but this uh, this reminds me of the original Arteza sketchbooks this is Artistro it's not Arteza but I just thought it was a very interesting it seemed like the same thing then I used some 100% cotton paper and thought well I'm just going to do another loose floral to see if I can get some flow and I really didn't even get the flow on this fairly well sized cotton paper so um, I just think there's an issue it's just too much uh, too much filler too much it's probably PW4 like the precipitated chalk filler that they use in um, or maybe it's PW5 I'm not sure I can't remember but there's like a kind of a chalky filler that um, that they use to bulk out some of these paints so I mean it's pretty you can paint with them but um, I found that it would not be my pick for recommending a paint to paint with however I realized these probably will be good for something and so I grabbed a piece of ordinary cardstock and I just started just to paint on it and I found that if you are painting on unsized paper these will actually work very well for you especially with the included water brush so I did this with the water brush and just the paints right off the pan 
there's no mixing area here so I think using the water brush not doing a lot of mixing just working right off the pan is going to be your best bet with this and working on unsized paper so if you're somebody who enjoys um, like working in a, a paper planner like decorating your planner with watercolor if you're a bible journaler if you're a card maker who likes to work on just plain white cardstock and wants to just add some uh, dashes of color if you're a brush letterer I think this would be good for brush lettering because there isn't a lot of flow and stuff stays where you put it and you can use it on unsized paper without feathering I think that's who this is going to be for I did not like the quality of the small brush I mean I started off with some of the the bristles were bent I think they went back into place pretty well after a little use they're sticking out a little bit but not like they were when I first got it um, the water brush is big though so you probably need to get either a smaller brush that's a little better quality than this or a smaller water brush because this is one of the I would say large size water brushes I actually end up liking the water brush quite a bit um, the bristles do stain so if that's something that bothers you then you know that's going to be too bad because that, that will stain but this is like a large size water brush you'd want probably something smaller for brush lettering but I think this paint would work really well for you because it does want to get a little syrupy when you really wet it down it's so thirsty it just keeps absorbing and absorbing and absorbing water then when you go to pick it up you're going to get this kind of syrupy consistency that I think would hold a brush letter stroke really well or even like rose modeling type strokes to decorate um, you know your planner pages, bible journals, scrapbooks, cards, that sort of thing. So that's what I would recommend this for. The eraser's nice, the pencil's nice, it's a nice soft pencil. Um, I don't really care for these sponges because they just look so gross after you use them but um, but yeah that would be my, my recommendation. It's such a cute little set that if you're you know if you want if you're into beautiful stationery I mean I love beautiful stationery this will be pretty sitting on your desk for planning and planning journaling that sort of thing but as far as a uh, workhorse watercolor set you can do much better for your money I would recommend if you've got 20 bucks to spend and you want a decent watercolor set go with the pretty excellent watercolor set or go with the um, the new Himmy watercolor set that's got the diamond uh, shaped pans those are both very transparent they perform really well and they're going to be a lot easier to learn with than this if watercolor painting is your goal. But hey, if, if you're a planner, if you're a, um, a card maker, scrapbooker, brush letterer, I think these would be very satisfactory for you. They do seem a bit expensive for what they are though, in my, um, in my honest opinion. Now that said, uh, I want to thank Artistro for sending these to me. Um, maybe some of this feedback will help them provide better products in the future. I really I wish they included paper like this for the free paper in their little paper packet because this is a much higher quality paper than what they um, than what they put in there and honestly if they keep the paint the same and they you know market this to um, planner hobbyists and scrapbookers and card makers they could even do some pre-printed little bookmarks or something and I think that would, on that paper and I think that would just be so fun and so lovely to work with but as it sits now um, I can't recommend it for watercolor painters but um, but crafters using unsized paper I think it would just it would really uh, it would fit the bill there you have it I hope you found this uh, review helpful um, and yeah that's that's all I have for you today uh, thank you so much for watching please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed these reviews and until next time happy crafting